this is the chair from John Cage's changing installation. So he came and kind of looked at the space and decided that nothing will happen to the space. He came up with, as he does, using kind of chance operations, but at that time he, he was using a computer program. He wasn't using I Ching anymore. And he invited artists to be in the exhibition with him. He went to our fifth floor the same way Dennis did to find something. And John picked out six chairs that would be in, in the piece. And he loosely gridded out the floor on the floor plans that we gave him. And then every day for 105 days, I used those numbers to rehang the whole show. So day one, piece number 17 went into position 38, and chair number four went into position 42, and you turned it 180 degrees. Sometimes chairs were on top of each other. Sometimes all the artwork that you would, you would say was the artwork, but the whole the space was the artwork, would be all around the corner. You would come off the elevator and you'd think, well, <laughs> what's going on? Which was great, and then you'd find it somewhere else. It really brought attention to the space, that piece, for me. And because it was my, one of my earlier experiences in the building itself, it just called, like, this, the building was just part of the piece, really. You know, the whole environment was part of the piece. He gave me a, another score of where to put the 4x5 camera. He joked about, oh, I could also go as far as you can, I choose the f-stops for you, and I'll choose all that stuff for you. And he decided that was way too much, which would have been way too much. So the only option I had was I could turn it somewhere and I could take a picture. And sometimes you take a picture of what you thought was artwork, and sometimes you take a picture of nothing, but that was also the artwork. And the cat went throughout the whole thing. Yeah, the funny, the cat would sit, Wherever I took a picture, the cat would sit dead center in the image. <laughs> no matter where I took Cats that picture. Cats are that way. I thought it would be interesting as kind of a guerrilla sort of prank, but also as a, an art piece and a performative kind of uh, duration-based experiential sort of project to go to the, his, like kind of take him at his word. Is it worthwhile to have the, this work that he puts in this space and the furniture? Is it interesting enough to go to it every day if it changes every day? And so I decided to go there every day and make a sound recording John Cage's primary focus of his life and his project, uh, his life's project, I think, is to encourage listening, to uh, encourage acute in listening. <coughs> his trip here was really joyous. We picked mushrooms together in Allegheny Cemetery and ate them. And he was also an ice cream, a, a, a gelato lover. So he bought us a gelato machine, <coughs> which promptly fell apart. Not didn't fall apart, just stopped functioning. So he ordered another one, which we, which we kept in rotation for a while. And evidently that's what he did at home, was he, he had two of them, so that when one went out of order, you would always be able to make gelato.